Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel! For today's video, I'll be discussing to you about more problems on arithmetic sequences. Please keep on watching! Let's consider the first problem. The second term of an arithmetic sequence is 24 and the fifth term is 3. Find the first term and the common difference. So we can illustrate the given problem in this way. First term, blank. The second term is 24. And we have here another two blanks. And three is the fifth term. We cannot solve directly the common difference since we don't have terms that are consecutive. The best thing that we're going to do is to let 24 as our first term and 3 as our fourth term. So the illustration will become like this. So 24 now is the first term and 3 is the fourth term. So with this, we have already the assumed value so, our first term is 24. But remember, this is not the value of the first term that we are looking for. This is just only an assumed value. N is 4 because we have here 4 terms. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And lastly, we have last term equals 3. We are going to use the n-term formula to solve for the common difference. So we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus quantity of n minus 1 times d. Now let's substitute our n. a sub n is 3. Our first term is 24. Then our n is equal to 4 minus 1 times d. Now let's simplify. We have bring down 3, bring down 24. 4 minus 1 is 3 times d. We have 3d. Transpose 24 to the left side, and this will become negative 24. So bring down 3. 3 minus 24 equals bring down 3d. Subtract 3 minus 24. The answer is negative 21. Bring down 3d. To solve for d, divide both sides of the equation by 3. So we have 3d divided by 3. Of course, the answer is d. And negative 21 divided by 3, we have negative 7 as the value of our common difference. Since we have already the common difference, we can now solve directly the first term. Go back to the given problem. The given problem. 24 is the second term. So to solve the first term, just subtract the second term by the common difference. So 24 minus negative 7, that is 31. By solution, we have first term is equal to the second term minus the common difference. 24 is the second term minus negative 7. Simplify, this will become... 24 plus 7, and 24 plus 7 is 31. So it means that 31 is the first term. So therefore, the first term is 31, and the common difference is negative 7. Now let's have the second example. Find the ninth term of an arithmetic sequence with first term of 10 and a common difference of negative one half. So the given data with this problem are we have already the first term which is 10. We also have n which is equal to 9 because we are asked to find the ninth term and the common difference is negative one half. So we can now write the n term formula. 
we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus quantity of n minus 1 times d. Now solve for the 9th term. Substitute or a sub 1 is 10 plus quantity of 9 minus 1 times negative 1 half. Simplify further. Just copy 10. So 9 minus 1 that is equal to 8. And it will be multiplied by negative one half. So simplify further. So just copy ten and eight times negative one half. That is equal to negative four. Why we have negative four? Eight can be factored out as two and four. So that is why we can. Cancel out 2 here and 2 because 2 divided by 2, that's already 1. And since we only have here 4, this will be multiplied by negative 1. So 4 times negative 1, that is equal to negative 4. Next, add 10 and negative 4. So of course, the answer is 6. So it means that the ninth term of the sequence is 6. Now let's have the third example. How many terms are there in an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 4 and with first and last terms 3 and 15 are respectively? From the given problem, we have already the value of the common difference which is equal to 4, as well as the value of our first term 3 and the last term which is equal to 59. Now we are going to solve for the value of n since we are asked to determine how many terms in the given arithmetic sequence? Using the n term formula, we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus quantity of n minus 1 times d. Now we're going to substitute. So our last term is 59, first term is 3. Just copy quantity of n minus 1 and the value of d is equal to 4. Now we're going to simplify. So we have just bring down 59 as well as 3 n times 4, that is 4n. Negative 1 times 4, that is equal to negative 4. Next, we have to combine 3 and negative 4. 3 and negative 4, that is equal to negative 1. Just bring down 4n as well as 59. Now, we are going to solve for the value of n. But before that, we have to transpose first negative 1 to the left side of the equation. And that negative 1 becomes positive 1. So we have 59 plus 1 equals 4n. 59 plus 1, that is equal to 60. Bring down 4n. To solve for n, divide both sides of the equation by 4. 4n divided by 4, that is equal to n. And 60 divided by 4, that is equal to 15. So... It means that there are 15 terms in a given sequence. Move on with problem number 4. Which term of the arithmetic sequence is negative 23 given that a sub 1 or first term is equal to 7 and a sub 2 equals 2? With this problem, we are also asked to determine the num the value of n okay because you are asked to find which term okay so from the given problem we can determine easily the common difference because we have here consecutive terms first term and second term so to solve for the common difference we have a sub 2 minus a sub 1. And 2 minus 7, of course, the answer is negative 5. And we also have the value of a sub 1 or the first term, which is equal to 7. And our a sub n or the last term is equal to negative 23, given from the problem. Now we can solve for the value of n. 
So again, write the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 plus quantity of n minus 1 times d. Next, substitute. So a sub n is negative 23. a sub 1 is 7. Then just write quantity of n minus 1 and our d is negative 5. Simplify further. Copy negative 23. Bring down 7. Apply distributive property of multiplication. So n times negative 5 negative 5 in negative 1 times negative 5 the answer is positive 5 simplify further so we have to combine 7 and 5 so 7 plus 5 that is equal to 12 negative 23 just copy and we have to bring down negative 5 in to solve for n transpose 12 to the left side of the equation positive 12 will become negative 12 so negative 23 minus 12 the answer is negative 35 and just bring down negative 5 in to solve for n divide both sides of the equation by negative 5 so negative 5 n divided by negative 5 the answer is n and negative 35 divided by negative 5, the answer is 7. So it means that negative 23 is the seventh term of the sequence. Now let's have example number 5. Now let's consider problem number 5. What are the first and last terms of an arithmetic sequence when its arithmetic means are 35, 15, and negative 5? Now, for our solution, we can illustrate the problem in this way. The three arithmetic means are on the middle, and the first term is unknown as well as the last term. With this, we can easily find our common difference since we have consecutive terms so 15 minus 35 we have negative 20 or negative 5 minus 15 same we have negative 20 from this we can now solve for the first term how just subtract 35 by negative 20 so 35 minus negative 20, the answer is 55. We have now the first term. For the detailed solution, we have first term is equal to second term minus common difference. Our second term is 35 minus negative 20. And if we're going to simplify, this will become 35 plus 20 because if we're going to apply the rule in subtracting integers, this will become positive. Okay, so 35 plus 20 is 55. Now, to get the last term, we are going to add the common difference to the fourth term, which is negative 5. And negative 5 plus negative 20 is of course equal to negative 25. For the detailed solution, we have fifth term is equal to fourth term plus the common difference. So that's why we have here negative 5 plus negative 20 and that is equal to negative 25. So we are already done. We can now conclude that 55 is the first term, while negative 25 is the last term of the given sequence. Now let's have problem number 6. A theater has 20 seats in the first row, 22 seats in the second row, increasing by 2 seats per row for a total of 26 rows. How many seats are there in the theater? So, with the given problem, we can determine the common difference that is equal to 2 because the problem states that 
every row is being increased by two two seats. Next, our first term is twenty. Our n is equal to twenty six since there are total of twenty six rows. With this, we can now solve for the total number of seats in the theater by using the sum formula. Substitute. So we have 26 divided by 2 times the quantity of 2 times 20 plus quantity of 26 minus 1 times 2. Simplify. 26 divided by 2 is 13. 2 times 20 is 40. 26 minus 1 is 25 times 2. The answer is 50. Next, bring down 13. Add 40 and 50. So the sum is 90. Now multiply 13 by 90. And the product is 1170. So it means that there are 1170 seats in the theater. That's all for today. Hope you learned something. Before I end, let me share to you one of the verses from the Bible. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Philippians 4, 6-7 Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please do like or comment if you learned something and have questions regarding the video. Share to other students for them to learn or master the lesson. And please don't forget to subscribe to be updated for more math lesson videos and turn on the bell for notifications. That's all for today and God bless you all.